Um, is God granting powers to a non-religious class a good idea? Sure, as long as they're doing their thing. As long as, as long, I don't do the gods really care. Like if you're a, if if you if you do something that's meaningfully important to the world and is in accord with the gods' hopes and dreams and expectations, why wouldn't they reward you even if you've, yeah. For instance, we did a interlude on Wednesday night with me and Matt Driscoll playing him playing Leech. And uh, a lot of people watched and a lot of people were like, this is really cool. I am uh, immediately this. You go look in the discord. I'm not making this up. People were like, I'm doing this. I'm doing this this week in my game because this is fucking cool. I never, never thought I'm, I never, never occurred to me to do something like this before. This is neat. OK, cool. That makes me happy. But then there, I, even though I, I, you know, there are other people who lack context for this and they'll be like, I don't like this. It feels very no one has said this, or at least if they have, I didn't see them, but people will think this. Seems very deus ex machina, like Matt's frustrated with the players and they're not they're not figuring out the stuff they need to figure out, so he had a god show up and just explain everything to him. Um, and that is a reasonable conclusion to make, although I think that it is ahistorical, and it also misunderstands what deus ex machina means. Deus ex machina is I wrote myself into a corner. I'm not a great writer yet, and now my players are in a jam, and there's no way to get them out, so I'm just going to have a god show up and fix everything in a very implausible way. Well, that's not what happened on Wednesday night. If there are clerics and warlocks, and the gods and powers are real, the gods have much, much greater power than the mortals. These are all logical statements. This is, um, this is, a, this is a syllogism, sort of. The, go the gods have enormous power. Maybe not omnipotent power, but enormous power. They have enough power that they are able to grant their thousands of worshippers all of these spells and abilities. And they have wants and desires. Gods represent certain, each god represents a different ethos. And if you are a paladin or a cleric and you don't follow that ethos, you risk upsetting your god. So not only, so what, do, what does this mean? The gods exist, they have enormous power, and they have desire and will. But if you're running D&D, &D, almost certainly you take these things as axioms in your campaign, even if you haven't consciously, consciously thought about it. And yet the gods aren't walking around fighting on Earth with mortals just cowering in the corner, wondering what the hell's going on as as lightning bolts fly across the sky and the stars turn black and all this nonsense. Why? If these things are true in your game, and they must be because you have clerics and warlocks and paladins in your game, if the gods are real and they grant their worshippers powers and they only do it if you meet certain criteria and behave a certain way and therefore they want certain things, why don't they just show up on Earth and enact their will directly? Well, there must be some kind of barrier preventing them. There must be some kind of I can get my prayers through to you, but there must be I'm constrained somehow. I'm con I, I as a god am constrained somehow from enacting my will on the mortal plane, the prime material plane. So what you saw Wednesday night is how I contextualize that, that notion of there are rules. I'm not, Matt Colville does not explain what the rules are or what's preventing the gods from just, but, but if you watch that interlude, you go, oh yeah, the gods can't just, they, they can't just act however they want. There are some, maybe there are actual physical laws of the universe preventing them from doing it. Or maybe it's, we've all agreed to these rules and it's just consensus. Both are possible. Maybe something in between, but these things must be true. These things must be, logically, they must be true. This is how I contextualize that truth in my game. I think it's neat. I think it's one of the reasons that we run fantasy is that you can do stuff like that. So in everything I do, the gods show up every once in a while to kind of try to help. If you read my first novel, Priest, Hayden meets a saint, and she tries to, she does her best to try to get Hayden to just pay attention to what the hell's going on around him. And he can't do it. He's so in the wasteland. He's so deep in the wasteland that he can't see it, and he can't hear her, and he loses. Spoilers. And it happens again in the next book, although it's a different saint. So that's a bit, and plus one of my favorite series is, is the Belgariad. And even though I, I don't think that series is incredibly woke, I still have a lot of affection for it. I still enjoy reading it. And there's a lot of, you know, every 60 pages or so, an omnipotent God shows up and makes sure the players are doing the right thing. And the readers like that, that gives them this sense of security and makes them happy that the world makes sense. And the characters get frustrated by it, but that's, so there's a lot of, Stuff like that in my world. Also, the Thomas Covenant books had a big impact on me. Thomas Covenant is like the leech of that world. Like the god, gods chose him and sent him down. They're like, now we, he's the best we could do. Who knows what's going to happen? We might be all be screwed and the world's going to end, but we can't act directly. 
anyway so that's that's a running the game video which you just heard the premiere for the, the i should say the preview for that's a running the game video predicated on a D, &D game that's how i want to recon it's going to be a regular everyday running the game video with a script on the set and it's not literally just going to be me telling you what happened but it's going to be inspired by the events that happen in the game because that way i get to make the content that people want and the content I want, which is talking about what happened in the game, but in a context that is more broadly applicable.